Back in 1993, I was a month away from graduating from UC Davis. And I did not realize that I had just met my future husband, Kevin. He was cute. He was a Aggie basketball star. And he doesn't let me forget that he still holds three point records today. I used to refer to him as marriage material, but not for me, for somebody else, because I was moving in a month. So I never would have guessed then that A, he would become my husband 10 years later, and B, that he would stay home with our five kids and that I would be the breadwinner. I grew up in the Midwest, and from what I knew, I would get a college degree, and yes, I'd work for a while, and I'd work hard. But when it came time to have kids, if we were lucky enough to have them, I would be the one to stay home with the kids. And that was the plan all the way up until one month after my twins were born, our fourth and fifth children. Today, I am so grateful to love what I do as Senior Vice President of Sales at Salesforce. My kids are now 13 to 16 years old. They're genuinely good people that I enjoy hanging out with most of the time. And while I had to figure out how to navigate my way through some pivotal moments in this life to get to where I am today, let me try to see if I can save you some steps. You would think in 2021 that this generation would have many obvious paths and options to balance this thing called career and family. But the question, how do you do it, is still the number one question that I get from so many women and increasingly men, and even more increasingly men who are asking on behalf of the women in their lives. They are all trying to figure out how to navigate this rush hour of life. And truthfully, there are many paths, but the decision is still complex. And through my journey thus far, there have been three pivotal moments that have given me the opportunity to take on a more challenging career while still feeling fulfilled as a mother. And this first pivotal moment came when I picked the right partner and I stayed in the game. When Kevin offered to stay home with the kids, that was the first pivotal moment for me. And I remember back when we first dated, he was always talking about what he was most impressed with me about. And that was that I had a chemical engineering degree and that I had a job before I graduated. And then I was really excited about this book that I was reading called Power Talking. And it might seem like a small thing, but in retrospect, this view on equality made all the difference in terms of creating a true partnership as we tackled this working and parenting life. Before kids, the decision on whether to continue working or not, it seems pretty clear and simple. Ah, I'll figure it out. But truly, until you have a child, no one can predict the feeling that you have of this awesome responsibility, not just to keep the child alive, but the feeling and the pressure that you feel to make sure that they're set up for success in this world. It's a lot. And it's this time after kids that so many working mothers start to diverge from their career. And I remember this deciding moment like it was yesterday. I still feel this anguish in my chest in the decision that I had to make here. I was two years into working at Salesforce. I was an account executive, loving my role, loving my team, loving the company. And, but in those early years, if you weren't out meeting with customers, you were expected to be in the office. And when you have a one-year-old, your schedule can be unpredictable. And Kevin was also working. So when my daughter got sick, it usually fell on me to go stay home with her or pick her up from daycare. And that 4.30 pickup time meant I was leaving the office in a rush to go pick her up. And often that meant missing a lot of those really critical networking happy hours. So on top of all of that, I, had a, I was part of a, a youngish team and I was the first one to get pregnant. So all in all, I was an outlier. So I got to this point where I just felt like I wasn't giving my best to anything, not to my job, not to being a mom, not to my girlfriends or my, my twin sister. Something had to give. And the second maternity leave was decision time for me. And the common choice for so many women at this point is just to simplify it all and to stay home and go be a full-time mom. And this is if they can afford it. But I just wasn't ready for that yet. I still loved what I was doing. I still loved working. I still loved the company. So I scrambled to make something work. There was another mom from another team that was also in the same situation as I. 
And so together, we created a role in support where we could take cases from home. And this way, I could work from home and I could parse my work hours into blocks that worked for me, whether it be early morning or late night. This also meant that Kevin had to shift and take on that wake up and breakfast routine from six to 9 a.m. And this allowed me to actually spend chunks of time in the middle of the day, taking my kids to park and spending a lot of time doing picnic lunches. And while it was a super busy time, I was so grateful that I was able to stay in the game, both in my job and in my kids' lives. But as grateful as I was for the support role and the flexibility, doing what you don't love takes a toll on you over time. It wears on you. And I was a long way from my sales role that I loved. So after four years in that role, I started to look for other options within the company. And it also meant that the possibility was there that I would leave the game and stay home and be a full-time mom. Because at the time, there weren't that many roles that were available that allowed me to scratch my itch to get back closer to the customer, to get you know, closer to a selling role, you know, but also have the flexibility that I needed at home. And that was when Kevin suggested that he would stay home with the kids and he would take the flexibility that he had managing his own real estate to go do that. It had never even occurred to me that that was an option. And had he not offered, I would not have felt the freedom to take on these harder and more complex roles where I was. So as they say, it takes a village. So make sure that whatever situation you're in, that you're choosing a partner or partners that will support your career goals and that will give you multiple options and that allows you to stay in the game. So my second pivotal moment came when I decided to step on that first rung. And I nearly never took that leap into leadership. One day, about three years after Kevin decided to stay home with the kids, one of our executives pulled me aside and he said, you really should think about getting in to a leadership role. And at the time I was thinking, why would I do that? I love the account executive role. I love being close to the customers. I love being in the middle of the action. And I love being accountable for being the one closing the deal. And I also looked around me and I didn't see a ton of women leaders. And I certainly didn't see a ton of mothers that were actually figuring it out. And so my natural response was, I don't think so. <laughs> and he said, well, you're 39. You've got a good reputation here for success and you naturally like to mentor others. So you should think about it. And so I walked away from that thinking he made some really good points. And so as I was sinking into my subconscious, about a year later, about five weeks into our fiscal year, our manager for the team currently up and left and went to a startup. And so he left a hole on that team. And on the way out, he suggested that I should be his backfill. But that leader at the time said, no, she's never managed before. She's gonna have to start a level below. And I got that feedback and I sat on that for a little bit. And luckily, it only took a couple of days for me to say, you know what? That role really should be mine. I am a perfect candidate for that role for the company. And so I came back and I pled my case across the leadership team and I was invited into the interview presentation process. I practiced that interview 50 times across 50 different people before I gave that and I came out the top candidate. But we weren't done yet because it needed to be approved by the president who just so happened to be a woman. And so one day I walked into the elevator and there she was and I said, hi, apparently you've got an approval on your desk for my promotion. And she looked at me and she said, have you ever managed before? And I said, no, I haven't. And she said, well, you have five kids, so you'll have no problem managing. And that is why we need more women in leadership. How uncommonly refreshing that was for someone to see being a mother as a strength, not a weakness. And I came to learn just how right she was. Women, and especially mothers, make innately natural leaders. So when I tell that story, I still cringe a little bit. Why did I have to be told that I could be a leader? Why did I need somebody else's permission to encourage me? 
I recently realized that I am not the only one or I wasn't the only one. The data shows that there's a pattern with women. They're calling it that broken first rung phenomenon. 30% less women than men take that first leadership role. Right now, 57% of all college graduates are women. And 50% of the early workforce is women. But only 21% of C-level executives are female. And many believe that this is due to that broken first run. We are leaving 1 million leadership jobs on the table, ladies. So women need to go take that first step earlier if we are truly going to get to parity because this is an irreversible trend. And don't wait for somebody to give you permission. So the third pivotal moment in my life was when I muted the noise and I knew my worth. The third pivotal moment came in my life when I realized that others would not see my path as clearly as I would. And that there were plenty of societal pressures and those that would challenge my choices, including those that are closest to me. And that I needed to learn how to mute those external noises. I remember when Kevin and I got into this big argument at my company Christmas party. I had just taken on a promotion for second line leadership. And he called me selfish. He called me selfish because it said it could jeopardize my time with my kids. And I think back, could you imagine a man being called selfish for taking on a promotion with more pay? I pushed back that night and it was an inflection point on me owning my role. I made the point that in the last three years, it had not affected my relationship with my kids or my time with my family and that I could always pull back if I wanted to. And as it turned out, it was just fine. Because you know what else I realized and what I learned is that the higher up that I went, the more control I had over my schedule. And I could make all of those games and those concerts and those back to school nights that I wanted to go to. So whatever you do, don't plan your career around wanting to be a parent. Find a career where you love what you do where you make yourself valuable and you have a better chance to call your own shots. And let's be clear, the decision that Kevin made to stay at home was not an easy one either. There were plenty of societal pressures for him. My brother-in-law pulled him aside multiple times. Dude, what are you doing? That job is so hard. Don't do it, run now. His dad, a proud Latino man, could not understand what his star athlete son was doing. And for the first two years, it was really hard. But you fast forward 13 years, and Kevin's now doing exactly what he wants to be doing. He's got a flexible schedule managing his own real estate. He is incredibly active in the community. He coaches our kids in multiple sports, and he's also their life coach, maybe too often for their liking. <laughs> But to the college students that are walking into the workforce today, you are walking into a much more friendly, flexible, corporate working parent environment. And society is following suit. There are many progressive companies out there that are now offering flexible work schedules or expecting a flexible work schedule, even if it might just, just be the morning or the afternoon. And parental leave is now being offered for both men and women. And oftentimes, for a six month maternity leave versus the former six week. And childcare is being offered sometimes at a discount or even on site. But being an executive working mom now does not come with that stigma that you're shirking your responsibilities at home. And it's really important that we choose to work at these companies that are pushing these progressive benefits to allow this balance of working families because we need to pull forward the laggards that aren't there yet. I feel so fortunate that I've worked for a company that has evolved over time to be one of the top leaders in offering these progressive options. So why is all of this worth it? Well, besides the fact that women often miss out on this opportunity to have a fulfilling career and to build confidence and to have financial independence and dads not wanting to miss out on raising their kids and wanting to build a strong relationship with them. It matters to global growth. 
because women are not matching the productivity of men, we are leaving $28 trillion worth of GDP on the table. And McKinsey says just by changing a few things, we can capture 12 trillion of that by 2030. And the science is clear on the positive impact on children. There is no difference in long-term success or happiness of children that come from two working parents versus one working and one stay at home. In fact, children have a higher degree of confidence and a higher IQ when dads are more involved in the parenting. And the daughters of working mothers earn more and believe they can get just as far ahead in their career as their male colleagues. In the end, I'm glad my life plans didn't work out. I'm so grateful that I picked the right partner and stayed in the game, that I stepped on that first rung, and that I muted the noise and I knew my worth. Thank you.